the Avengers issue number four. We're still going strong, folks. We're still doing it. This book's still going out. You know what? It's very fascinating like this is what we're doing. I think there is something to say about this Avengers run where it's kind of like the antithesis to everything that Aaron was doing. You know, that's very multiversal. Look at every single different interpretation of every single character you ever know coming at you at once in this big, grandiose way. Where this issue, and this book in particular, has been like, here's just some new stuff to stick in the toy box. If you want to play with it, you can. And maybe that'll be appealing to some people. Personally, what this book is doing is not that compelling and I this issue it kind of just did the same as issue three now how how much longer are we going to do this Jed McKay I ask you are we building to something is there like a, a climax we're trying to reach I wonder because I don't know where we're going with this it's whatever so last issue the Ashman combined show, show they showed up they have an impossible city. I guess, is this like supposed to be like a play on the authority? Because the authority lived on like that thing that had like doors to infinite worlds and stuff. It was like a, it was like a city in itself. And these guys like to build cities and like Jax Hawksmore likes to build cities and play with cities and stuff. I don't, I, I'm, maybe I'm thinking too much into it. It's pretty weird and not that interesting. So, yeah, the Ashbin Combine showed up. Sam and T'Challa are fighting their way through the city that's impossible. And we get narration from the city. It's like, I've never had heroes on my streets in a long time. I'm afraid they're probably going to be murdered. So, yeah, there you go. We're going to see them murdered on there. Cut to Vatican City. Thor is fighting Alabaster, the big egg god. And she's like, yeah, I've killed gods before. You're nothing. And they fight. And... She, like, takes over people's souls and has them pray for her. So if, if she dies, the souls of the people that she has, like, taken control of their religion are going to die with her. So that's that's fun. Cut to Sydney. Wanda is fighting the dead, which is just, like, a guy with, like, you know, a sack and a noose on his neck. And it's a big, sprawling fight. And, of course, Wanda's doing very good. But suddenly, like, a, a voice, like, a ghostly voice creeps up in her mind. She doesn't know what it is. Until she realizes, like, oh, it's Scython. He's he's saying something to her? What does that mean? Who's to say? We go to Toronto, where Tony is fighting the city smith. And this is a guy who's just, like, an, an artist trying to build a creative city. You know, it's pretty simple. He's kind of like, you know, you Philistine, you Vulgarian, you know nothing about my work. And Tony's like, shut up. I don't care for you. The guy turns part of the city into a giant worm and it tries to eat Tony. And that's pretty much what this book is. We have like a couple pages where it's just like panels with the characters doing stuff. And then like a big splash page showing you the hero fighting or getting hurt. And that is extremely fine. I have no problem with that. It's an Avengers book. We don't need to get philosophical with it. If they're going to fight a big city worm where its teeth are like eye beams, I'm not going to complain. I get what we're doing. There's something to that. It's an interesting concept that I guess it does kind of like take the Avengers into like another large life threatening thing for them to deal with. So that's fine. Thor continues to fight Alabaster. It's going as good as you'd expect. Wanda continues to fight the dead. Now she's fighting the voice of what she thinks is Scython. Maybe it's just the dead controlling the ghost of a memory in her head. Because if you remember a couple books back for Wanda, not even in this Avengers run, but just like a couple books back for the character's appearance, the entire entity of Scython was like put into her soul, which is kind of the premise of what like the contest of chaos is going to be with Agatha. I don't know. So yeah, Wanda's fighting some some guys and it's kind of fun i guess it's compel it looks good i'll say that about this book it looks really good even if it's just like a simple thing tony destroys the worm but then he gets hit with more city smith stuff and gets like trapped in like some concrete ball or like some gold ball or something i don't know i don't know the heroes are losing and we intercut that with like sam 
and T'Challa having like a conversation about like what worries them more if Thor dies or if Wanda gets taken over because Sam's like he's a god if he dies that's bad but T'Challa's like I'm more scared what happens if Wanda loses because she's actually scary and it's their classic like why are these guys feuding at the moment banter as if that's all they talk about like we've had them show up in this book at the beginning and the end both times they reference like this secret feud that they are having I'm like why why do we have to bring that up twice we're aware of this do you have nothing else to say with these guys T'Challa of course has like a backup plan for when this eventually as it always would falls apart and of course Sam's like yeah that that tracks you smart guys always have another plan but we see T'Challa starts to be like okay so there's like nobody else on this earth or I guess on this city let's let's kill it but no that's not true there's something on the city the city itself is on the city because I am alive and I was once I once had another name of course I'm a normal guy I once had another name but now I am the impossible city and I'm very sorry but we're all going to die and the book ends there essentially leading us into nothing this is pretty much what happened in the third issue like the heroes in the third one dispatched to go fight these guys in this one they fight them no new information is revealed or told sam and t'challa have the same fight they've been having since the first issue and aside from being very beautiful i'm still left asking this question is like how how deep are we going to like writing for trades with this book you know I feel like we got two more issues of this Impossible City arc before I'm just like, I can't do it anymore. And I, I wonder how other audiences are feeling. Personally, you have a bunch of new characters that have never really done anything with very interesting designs who are showing up and destroying Earth. And I get, I do think there's like some authority vibes to it, where even if the Avengers could be perceived as those types of characters... And even if you want the Ashman Combine to be perceived as them, it does feel like we have a big idea to do, like, what if they could solve all of Earth's problems at once? It's so... It's just so not interesting. <laughs> and I hate to say that, because this really... This really could be something, but it's not. And we do fly through the issue pretty fast, so that's something, too. I don't know. I'm very curious to see where this run is going to go. I'll continue to read it and I'll continue to talk about it because I think Avengers is in that weird place where it's not always good. But this run in particular has not been that interesting to me. So the Avengers issue number four, I am going to give a six out of ten. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.